Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's endgame build, we have another Wicked Implement build designed around support this time round. We stated before that the weapon feels more of a supportive weapon with how well it can slow and freeze targets, so now I want to lean into this more. With how strong stasis is on its own, the shards effect and certain builds can provide a good source of melee energy to those who rely on it a lot. So, combine that with Precious Scar's effect of healing upon kills and our slow slash freeze effect and you get a walk-in one-man support unit for all occasions. Pretty nice and a simple way to make the Wicked Implement feel more supportive in content. So to start, we'll be using Tectonic Harvest which creates status shards from glaciers or frozen combatants that get destroyed. And then we have Diamond Lance which will allow me to throw in Ice Lance at targets which can freeze them on impact. Similar to last time, I found that having the Diamond Lance available made it not only easier to land free shots onto targets, but also can be used by other people on the team if they desire. This makes things a lot more easier when controlling the field and glaciers, as in case a teammate gets into a rough spot with an enemy and they see one of my lances around, they can go ahead and use that to buy themselves time or go ahead and recover. The tectonic makes sense to have as the amount of shards you'll be creating will be a lot, and one single glacier could produce 5 shards for the users. For fragments we then have whispers of shards which will boost our grenade regen rate for a short period. Whispers of bonds where defeated frozen targets will grant you super energy. Whispers of fissures which will increase the size and damage of our shard stasis effect. Whisper of rending where primary ammo weapons get a 43% damage buff. And then whisper of conduction which allows stasis shards to track to you. Changing a few things up. Having the Whispers of Bond and Vending is going to improve the build in key areas to where before we didn't need to. Our build will be using a super a lot to not only net kills, but also create a wide number of glaciers for us to make full use of. Adding the Bond Fragment should increase our super regen by just an extra bit, when paired with Dynamo and all creative mods. Rending, on the other hand, will one-shot glaciers, making it much more easier for us while also doing a lot more damage against frozen targets. Since Wicked Implement can apply freeze on its own, it's kind of a self buff that the weapon will benefit greatly from, and then adding on whispers of fissures to the mix will turn each and every frozen target into a miniature nuke. For our mods and stats, having a tier 10 in discipline and strength would be the most suitable to really bring out the strength of Stasis Titan, while also providing enough options or creating shards. For discipline, having ours at tier 7 with front of focus is going to allow us to reach tier 10 very easily once we get our armor charges going. This is going to be very important so we can make use of the glacial grenades that have a high cooldown rate, but ultimately will be creating shards for us and our team. With whispers of shards on top of the cooldown rate, it will negate the high cost the grenades provide while also allow us to make full use of them the best way we can think of. This is the same for strength, where we have ours at tier 7 as well, with Fond of Vigum also pushing the stat to tier 10. This has been useful in a number of ways, such as the slow inflicted, making it easier for us to freeze right after if we follow it up. Most of the time, the mini will help with getting rid of pesky targets by launching them. Now, if you decide diamond lances aren't your thing, then do remember that How of the Storm would be a great fit for the build instead, for expanding on the shards setup. And then lastly, resilience is down to the user and what slots you have left for investment. So if endgame then tier 8 to 10 is ideal, while if you're new to endgame, aim for tier 7 to 8 and go from there. For the armor charges we have charged up which will provide a plus 1 to how many charges we can carry. This paired with Harmonic Siphon, Elemental Charge, Powerful Attraction and Reaper allows us to retain a high precision of orbs of power on hand. This of course then leans into the surge we are using which is times 1 stasis weapon surge mods for the 7% damage buff, but also times 2 is very possible. Add on time dilation for increased self buff duration and all time based effects will be greatly increased. If you plan to use your heavy a lot then don't forget to add on the heavy ammo finder, times 2 harmonic reserves mod and harmonic scavenger if you have the space to do so. For the weapons we are wicked implement. The following weapon allows users to slow and freeze a target as long as you land precision hits. It takes around 2 precision hits to slow a target, while 4 will freeze a target outright, and this is amazing against many bosses to bosses with how easy it is to proc this. The main advantage to this is that compared to other weapons that can freeze targets, 
The following does not require special ammo to be used to proc this, nor does it hamper weapon ammo reserves for long periods. This, along with its ability to auto read those magazines from collecting status shards, makes it useful for slowing and freezing multiple targets without needing to reload your weapon. Combine this with Stasis Titan and how much shards we can create, and this weapon alone can improve the status build by times 10. For Heavy, we have Quilliam's Terminus Machine Gun with dynamic sway reduction and killing tally. This is a great heavy to own if you haven't got one already from King's Rule Raid, as the following is not only hard hitting and great against majors to many bosses in end game, but also because you can increase the weapon's magazine size just from its origin trait. Now, the version I have is more for minor to mini boss threats, and not so much against big bosses. However, that does not mean it cannot be used against bosses how it is. With his origin trait, I can double my magazine size, get some kills with killing tally, and then use all of that against the boss itself, which is beneficial for one large burst of damage. You can get this weapon to have around 100 plus in his base magazine with certain perk setups, but this does require users to enhance key perks, which is something quite time consuming if you don't have the time to do so. With the new exotic being exhausted by the general player base in terms of reviews, and a bungee stating that they will be looking at improving the weapon in the future, it now leaves us room to explore other ways of making the weapon functional with a number of setups. For my previous build around the weapon, the weapon is more support design with how it functions in high level content and how players should be using it. The slow and freeze effect allows players to easily stun champions at a safe distance, and combining this with any light subclass build is going to show how effective it is in GMs. I've decided to take the support of nature of the weapon a step further, and I've gone ahead and decked my Stasis and Titan out to help heal and empower teammates near me. The high usage of Stasis Shards around us allows teammates to regenerate their melee easily, and if you're running a build that focuses on using melee a lot, then the following is going to enhance your gameplay further. At the same time, using Precious Scars will not only heal me and others upon kills made, but in case me or my teammates die, and then we get revived, I will also be providing a healing aurora upon me, and that will last a few seconds. And then lastly, the status effect being provided via my abilities, subclass and weaponry, is going to make the most lethal end game around a whole lot easier to control and manage. With how strong the status still is in the game, not many people are leaning into the freeze effects compared to using strand, although suspend is a lot more stronger in terms of freezing conflicts. However, with stasis, I believe safety is more accessible via the glaciers being produced, and then with how you can control them, you can use them in a number of ways, such as destroying them to inflict further damage, using them as mobile cover, or just using them to block off certain enemy types from advancing. With a skilled player, this type of playstyle will make using the following build ideal for supporting newer players who need that extra hand. Of course, the only issue with the build I've noticed is how chaotic it can get with the amount of glaciers being produced, as these can block outgoing damage from your side from hitting the right targets at time. At the same time, I've also noticed that if you're playing with a strand user, there will be confliction between the two of you since suspend and freeze effects can cancel each other out. 9 times out of 10, this isn't too much of an issue as we tend to have them locked down, but you'll still have that 1% of the time where it might cause issue for the both of you. Overall, this setup defines the weapon to a more basic role of support since release, and actually provides the user a more bigger reason to use it. A flexible by nature, the build is chaotic to master but very fun on a large scale, and as long as you don't block your teammates' progression out, I can see this being helpful in a number of ways and areas. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.